What's up everybody, Brian Madler back with you. I am a former self-contained special ed teacher turned teacher coach slash personal trainer. And on this channel, we help teachers deal with that one kid. Kids who are disruptive, defiant, inappropriate, you know the drill. Today, today we are focusing on attention-seeking behaviors. Check it out. Hey everyone, welcome back. So there are basically five reasons that kids misbehave and we'll do each reason separately in a different video, but today we're gonna start with, in my opinion, the number one reason that kids misbehave and or are disengaged in school, and that is attention. I absolutely believe in, and by the way, I wanna be clear, I don't like to number them, but if you force me to number them, I would put it at the top of the list, attention. Now, attention, there are two different kinds of attention kids. Let's keep it simple for today and we'll call it attention A and attention B. Attention A is your stereotypical attention kid. Three or four brothers and sisters, single parent family, craving more attention because they don't get very much of it at home. Do any of you know that kid at your school? And then there's attention B, which is the total opposite of attention A. Attention B is a kid who gets so much attention at home, they have absolutely no idea how to live without it. You're spoiled, rotten brat. Do any of you know that kid at your school? And by the way, I want to be clear, when I say spoiled, I don't necessarily mean money. By spoiled, I mean you get your way. Mom says come in for dinner at 5. Kid comes in at 6.30. <laughs> Not only is there no consequence, but mom's like, here's your dinner, honey, and when you're done, I'll clean it up for you too because I just love you so much. You know what I call that? Child abuse. Now, of course, it's not the kind that we call child protective services for, nor should it be, because they have enough to do with the other kind. But now this kid comes to school, and you all tell him to wait in line. Kid's like, yeah, wait in line. Whatever, I don't wait in line. Raise my hand. Well, at home, I say what I want, when I want, how I want. Eat when you tell me it's lunchtime? Ha! At home, I eat all day and all night. And sometimes I even sit on the floor while I'm eating. And when I'm done, magically it gets cleaned up for me too. Notice how attention is the problem for both kids, but the solution is completely different. Attention A kid needs more. Attention B kid needs to learn how to live without it. See how if we don't figure out exactly where the behavior is coming from, then it's really hard to fix it. So let's look at it, right? What do you do? What specifically then is the strategy to do? And look, there are the good news about attention A is this isn't complicated, right? If a person is really dehydrated and they are going to die of thirst, what do we do? We have to give them some water. Well, same concept here. Kid is misbehaving, they're disengaged. Why? They want to be noticed. So what do I have to do? I have to notice them. Now, what does that actually look like? There are certain kids, I kid you not when I tell you this, they will get one foot into my classroom, one foot, and I'm all over them. Hey, get over here. Great job walking in. I love how you walked in. If you walk in like that every single time, good things are gonna happen for you in your life. You hear what I'm telling you? Great job walking in. I love how you walked in. Great job, great job, great job. So proud of you. Sometimes your colleagues might say something like, Brian, what? Did you just praise a kid for walking inappropriately? Oh, isn't that what they're supposed to do? Yes, colleague, that is what they're supposed to do, but no, that's not really what I did. I mean, it is what I did, but it's not really what I did. What I did is in my mind, I had this person who was dying for attention. For them, attention was like water. If they don't get it, they are going to take it. And what did they do? They got one step into my classroom and I absolutely doused them in it. Think about a bottle of Tabasco sauce. You know the big bottle of Tabasco sauce with the skinny little neck and the huge bottle? Think about that, except instead of Tabasco across the front, it has the word attention across the front. And miraculously, I have an entire bottle of it right here. So what did I do? You came in my room and I absolutely doused you in it. Here you go, here's some attention. Here, you little want a little more attention? Here, let me give you some attention too. Here, you can have a little and so can you. Why? What is my thought process? My thought process is, well, if I give you a whole bunch of water right now, maybe there's a good chance that you can go the next half hour, 45 minutes without needing another bottle of water. 
If I give you a whole bunch of attention right this second, maybe there's a good chance that you can go another, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes without needing another, a whole bunch more of attention. And isn't that what really teaching is all about? Teaching is about kind of getting through that next half hour or 45 minutes, is it not? You know, I gotta get through 45 minutes. I know, then we got lunch. I know, then it's 45 minutes. I know, but then we got reset. I know, then I got 45 minutes. I know, but after 45 minutes, they get to just chill and do whatever they want. I know, then we got 45 minutes. I know, but then we go home. Notice how it's getting through that 45 minutes. So that's attention A, giving them more. And by the way, do it privately. I believe that pro privately praising people is more effective than publicly praising people. That's true with correcting people as well. Privately correcting is better than publicly correcting and privately praising. Get in their ear. I love how you did this. You are so amazing. Right in their ear and then walk away. Attention B is harder because attention B, this is the kid who has to learn, right? When my when I am being inappropriate, my teacher does not notice me. And for these kids, what they have learned is bad attention is better than no attention. They've learned that by being inappropriate, I could get noticed. So what do I have to do? And by the way, to be clear, I wish I had a better answer than this. I don't love this answer, but it's all I got. And the answer is I have to ignore. There is no other thing but to ignore. And the good news is most teachers are good at that. Most teachers already know, listen, if I don't ignore this kid, he's gonna metaphorically or literally eat my lunch this year. Now, there is one place to just be aware of, right? So, inappropriate, inappropriate, inappropriate. Ignore, ignore, ignore. After we ignore, eventually the kid's behavior stops. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes, sometimes it takes 20 minutes, sometimes it takes the entire time that they're with us. But when they stop, that's where I notice teachers split, all right? Think of it like a road. All right, there's a road and there's two different stores that compete with it against each other on each side of the road, kind of like Target versus Walmart. Except these two stores, on this hand side, side on this side of the road, they've got a store that's called Consequences slash Punishments. And you could go in that store and they got stuff in there. They got stuff that's traditional stuff, stuff like call your mom, things like detention, things like in-school suspension, things like move your clip from from green to yellow to red, that's in there. You could go in there and pick. And then they got another store across the street. And this store is a store that says, make a kid's life better, make a kid's life better. And you can go in that store and they've got really unique things in that store. Things that you don't frequently see in many places, truthfully. They've got things like spend an extra two minutes every single day getting to know a kid outside of required class time, that's in there. They've got things like be vulnerable, tell a kid something that you really struggle with in your life and have them help you fix it. They get to hold you accountable, interesting stuff. And the thing is you can pick, like which store do I go into? And for certain people, for, for certain kids, the minute we go into the consequence slash punishment store, we have failed them. Because the truth is, for a lot of these kids that we're talking about, they already live a life of consequence. They are, I taught kids who were inappropriately abused by adults, okay? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna give that kid a consequence? How is that even possible? So what do I do? Instead, I do the complete opposite. And I do every part of my being focuses on how do I make that kid's life just a little bit better every single time. And, and when I'm able to do that, you see a whole different level of buy-in. So first thing to do, figure out which type of attention kid is it. And by the way, both types come from a, a, a different kind of home lives, right? Attention A, they often don't get very much. Attention B, gets so much, right? They don't know how to live without it. So make that your focus. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you give it a thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss, uh, and turn on your post notifications. So post notifications, subscribe, hit that like button, and leave me a comment about what you like and what you don't like. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you all soon. Until then, I say peace. I'm out of here.